is set from housing prices in Boston. And the column in here is the value of the property. And these others are features of the property. So you have how old it is, um, how many rooms it has, uh, crime. They're averaged based on some groups. That's why you can have um, a not whole number of rooms. And this is the median value. Um, so data set from Boston, it's got like what, 500 observations. Um, very commonly used for learning regression. So as a basic starting point, we can take um, the what we're trying to predict here, the um, median value and the number of rooms. And go insert, scatter plot. So we have the number of rooms on the bottom. As the number of rooms increases, it looks like the price increases up to a ceiling. So if I right click on here, I can add a trend line. I'm just going to make that red and thicker so it's easier to see. I can also add in this format trend line down at the bottom to add the equation and the R squared to the chart, which it did here. If I highlight those, I can go back to home and make the font bigger. So what this shows me is that there is a linear relationship, a um, positive linear relationship between number of rooms and the price of the house. It looks like for each additional room, the price of the house increases by 9,000. Um, uh, the R squared is telling us the proportion of the variance in Y that is explained by the model. Um, and so this is a pretty strong model for a business case. Um, there's clearly other things that are involved here, but um, this, is, uh, this is decent for us to be able to use for decision making. So if we're just using two variables, we can use that visual approach. But we can see here that there are other variables. Let's move that over here. Um, and so what we want to know is how these things work together and maybe change um, the work together basically. So let's try, there are like 13 of them. Um, let's just use them all. I'm going to go to data, data analysis pack, regression. And my y values are here. And my x values, I'm going to do all the other values. All right, I don't have labels. Uh, let's go ahead and do um, some plots here. Okay. Uh, these may not be very useful, but ah, each one of these is for one of these variables. And Excel did not be was not helpful in providing us names; it just named them all x1, x2. Um, all right, so let's look at this. What do we have? Let me make these a little larger. All right, so this is the overall uh, proportion of the variance that is explained by the model. Um, so 74% of the variance is explained by this model. The adjusted R squared is the one that penalizes us for adding variables that are not useful. Um, so there's an, a little bit of a penalty here for doing that. We can see in our NOVA, what we're seeing here is this is testing whether or not the value of all of these coefficients is actually zero. And since the f value here is quite large, um, we know that it's not the case that these are all um, just equal to zero. All right, so now we have this block here. Um, so we've got an intercept. That's uh, 
just like where we would start um, the baseline and then we have all of our variables I'm gonna come over here uh, if you take the titles here I'm gonna copy that and I'm going to paste and um, transpose them so now we can see the proper names So let's take a look at these. We have different coefficients, uh, all corresponding to um, these. To make it's a fairly complex um, equation because you just have lots of things to include here. But not all of them are statistically significant. So let's take a look here. So here is our t stat. In order for something to be statistically significant, the value here needs to be sufficiently large. Similarly our p-value would need to be below 0 0.05 you know, and not all of them are. So let's, let's see if I can sort put a filter just on these. Sort, uh, let's go ascending, descending. Good. So I just sorted them um, as a way to help us see visually. And very clearly, age and um, industrial are not statistically significant. So those should not be a part of our model. All right, so I'm actually gonna run this same one again, but I'm going to remove age and industry. Um, because Excel is a little weird, I am going to uh, just move it over here and move this over here data data analysis regression so that's here and this is these values. Let's remove those plots, we don't need them. And then I'll take these again. Home, paste, transpose. All right, so now we have removed the ones that were not statistically significant. Let's filter these again. Add a filter, p value, sort descending. So now all of them are statistically significant. And um, our R square value didn't change much because the two that we removed were not useful for our predictions. So it's not a big deal that um, that didn't change. This is a better model because it doesn't include things that aren't useful. Um, so the way that this model would work, I'm gonna go back to um, the way it was. So our prediction is going to be the equal to the intercept coefficient plus this times our crime plus this times our zone all the way down. Right? It's not going to work here because those are values. Um, but let's actually just pick one of them as an example. We'll take this first one and we can, these are our actual values, right? Um, all right. 
So let's take our coefficients. What I'm going to do is just set this up so we multiply this times our value. Drag that across. Make that one. Good. Now I can do the sum of these values. So the predicted value here is 30, and the actual value is 24. So as we said, it's not perfect, um, but that's what we get. We can easily go through, and let's change this now. Let's try um, this value. All right, our actual value is 21, and the predicted value is 24. Um, so pretty close, uh, not perfect, but you can see the uh, reason that you want an approach like this is so that every time you get a new house, you can take this in and you can paste it and you can immediately get um, a prediction. Right, so in the real world, we wouldn't actually know this value. That's what we're trying to predict. And so that our prediction value is here. Right, that's our that in red is our predicted value.